Merry Christmas, everybody. From our house to your house. It may be 80 degrees outside, but it is still Christmas inside. Happy holidays and welcome to Anne Marie's Workshops Vlogmas. This is my do-it-yourself rainbow journal. This is a great last minute gift, especially since most of these supplies can be found around the house. Now while I choose to, chose to make my journal rainbow, you can make your journal whatever colors you like. And as you can see by the supply list, the size of your paper determines the size of your journal. So you can work with whatever paper you have available. It can be as big as poster board or as small as an 8x10 sheet of paper. So what I'm showing you here is how I fold each individual paper to fit inside my origami rainbow journal. Now, so let's go through this. Right now we're on orange, but I do each individual color. So first thing you're going to do, you fold your sheet and paper in half, and then again, and then one more time. Now you're going to open it all the way up and cut to the very center. I'm going to pick up on the next color because I'm going pretty fast, right? Fold once, fold twice, fold one more time, open all the way up and cut to the center. Not on the side that's open, but on the side that has a fold. Let's do it one more time. Fold it in half, fold it one more time, fold it one more time, and I use a brayer to help. Now cut to the center on the side that's folded. Make it talk, lay it flat, and you have your folder. Now this one, we're going to cut not on the side that's open, but on the fold to the center so that it has feet. All right, open it up, fold it. It should be able to talk, and then fold it out, and you'll have a little mini journal, but we're gonna put all of these together. We're gonna do it one more time, fold it in half, fold it in half again, fold it one more time. You could use a brayer or a side of a pencil to get your, your corner sharp. Cut from the folded side to the center, open it up, make it talk, and then fold it back down. And now you should have your rainbow. Now we need to make the covers for our journal. So whatever size paper that you worked with, you're going to lay it down on your cardboard and, and trace around the edge. I used an old Amazon box that people that um, Amazon had so sent to me. Then you're going to cut around the full, all four sides of your cardboard. And then remember, you need two, so you need a front cover and a back cover. So I traced around and then I'm going to trim off the excess. Now I have the two. Now I'm going to make my journal by adding. Now I'm going to add, make my rainbow journal by adding my journals that I, my individual colors, one on top of the other. Unfortunately for me on this thing, I forgot to put my violet at the bottom. So I didn't figure it out until I got to here. So I glued mine together and then I had to take it apart and take the violet out because you know it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. It is not red, purple. <laughs> so I had to fix mine. But I'm gonna show you at the side here now. 
that I have it in the right order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. You can fix a mistake. You don't have to worry about everything being perfect. Now I'm going to place this really large book on top and let my uh, book set and maybe dry for an hour or two. Okay, so now I am going to cover my front and back covers and my binding cover with this piece of scrap fabric. I'm going to go, I'm just going to go around the edge, a little few dots in the center. I don't want it really sopping wet. And I'm going to turn it over and lay it down on the graphic on this um, uh, fabric that I want it to cover. Now remember I've got two covers, so I'm going to do it again. And now I'm going to take my card stock piece of paper, card stock piece, like a thick piece of paper, and I'm going to glue it down as well, leaving space between the covers. This card stock here is going to cover my binding on my book, on my journal. All right, so now I'm going to trim, making sure I have a little bit of fabric all the way around because I'm going to fold the fabric over so that my journal has a nice finish. All right, I'm going to put a dot of glue in each corner of my cover and I'm going to just fold over at a diagonal my fabric because it's going to make a nice sharp point when I fold the rest of the fabric over to cover that front page. So I did the first one, now the second, four dots, one in each corner, fold at a diagonal with the fabric. I love this glue because I can hold it for 10 seconds and it sets. It's not dry, but it will hold. And then I'm going to do the last one. Almost like you're doing a present or folding an airplane. All right, this is my binder cover. It's I'm going to cover it a different way. This is a thinner cardboard. This is a cardstock. It's not cardboard. It's a cardstock piece of paper. Now I'm going to go across the front, the on top and the bottom of my of my cover and fold up the fabric to cover so it'll be a nice snug cover. All right, I'm going to do one side and then the next side. And the reason we did that diagonal um, is because it gives us a nice point and makes the corners of the journal um, not be so, um, to be really nice and smooth and not really um, clunky or what's another good word for? It doesn't look as nice. <laughs> All right, see, so now it's nice and smooth and the corners are nice and sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with my other and I'm gonna set a book on top of it to hold it in place while I work on the other one. Same thing, I'm gonna glue around the edge and then I'm gonna fold up, hold it for a few seconds so that the glue can hold on to it. Now you can use whatever glue you have in your house. I like to use this kind of glue because it is archival. It um, is designed not to deteriorate. It's good with books and paper and it's just one of my favorite glues. I'll leave the link below of where I get it from. But you can use whatever glue that you have in-house. Now here's the fun part. I like my journal to be able to be um, closed. So I get to choose a um, ribbon, whatever kind of ribbon you have around that I think will go best around this journal. I decided on this red grow grain with a uh, green stitching at either side and I had just enough. And how I measured how much I needed is I wrapped it around the journal and tied a closure or a bow at the side. And when I figured out how much it took to do one, then I just had to double that 
and I would do two. So you, I'm adjusting the bow to the length I want it to be. Then I'm going to cut it at a diagonal so it doesn't fray as much. You can also use fray check on the ends if you are worried about it fraying. So I'm going to double it just enough. I was so lucky. But if it wasn't enough, I could use more than one ribbon. It's okay. Because this is a larger journal, I'm going to have a bow near the top and a bow near the bottom so that I can close my journal, especially if you're making this with kids and they want to have some privacy. Um, I'm going to have a further um, another video that shows you all the different hacks that you can do with this journal to make it special for the, um, the person that you're gifting it to or if you're making it for yourself. All right, so now this is my journal binding cover. It's going to cover over the sides as well as the ribbons that I used to um, to cover to close um, my book. Alright, you see how it covers both of them? Then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to put glue around the edge and then dot 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 because you don't want it too gloopy because it'll make the um, journal very wet. So I'm going to, of course, put a book on top let it set and let it dry a little bit for about an hour or so. Now I'm ready to add my front and back covers. Okay, I'm going to make sure the knot is in the front of the book and out of the way of the glue. I'm going to go around the very edge of this journal to make sure that um, the front and back covers are secured over the ribbon and then I'm going to make a serpentine pattern. You could use the dots as well, but I want to make sure that the front cover really, and the front and back cover really stay in place. All right, so now I'm just going to measure it up. The thing that is most important when, um, when you align this on the front cover is to make sure your cover is not upside down, and also that the side of your cover is flush with that binding cover. You don't want your cover extending over because then your book won't open. Okay, so I'm going to do it again so you can see. I'm going to go around the edge, the very edge of my book, and especially over that binding cover at the very edge. And now I'm going to do a serpentine pattern, or you could do the dots, it's up to you. And I'm going to put, I'm going to align and put the back cover on, making sure it's not upside down because this fabric does have a way, it's amphiopathic, it does have an up and down, okay? Now I'm making sure, see how I'm making sure that this is smooth, not, none of those covers is sticking over. You don't want one of the covers hitting the other cover, so you want to make sure that it is aligned. We are almost there. All we need to do is put a book on top of it, let it set, and then I would let it dry. This is what those old yearbooks are good for. <laughs> Once your journal is dry, you can do all sorts of things with it. You can turn this into a photo book, you can turn this into a diary, you can turn it into a storybook. It is a wonderful um, project to do with young children for them to make something for their parents or grandparents or their friends. It's wonderful for teenagers. Um, it can, they, these books can be made very, very large or very, very tiny. I hope you enjoyed this. There are so many things that you can do with this journal. Stay tuned for another Vlogmas that features the hats that go along with this journal. I hope you enjoyed making this. Happy Holidays! And stay tuned for more Vlogmas.